how did you and James meet? James up. James was working with a dude named Brad Nelson. Oh fuck. We were at uh we were at Shot Show, our first Shot Show. We walked in just fucking wide-eyed, had no idea what to expect. First show we'd ever went to where we actually had a paid booth. Normally we walked in, snuck in the side and stole a booth from somebody or moved somebody's shit and hoped they didn't say anything. And uh he comes, James comes walking in, Brad Nelson comes walking in, a couple other dudes. Brad Nelson's like, hey, I'm Brad Nelson. I'm your biggest dealer. And he was, like, we'd never met him. And they hand me a light fighter hat. And Jared Johnson, he was a sniper from uh, Stay 1 1 platoon. And uh, he's like, these guys, he's not such a light fighter. <laughs> he was talking about Brad Nelson. He's 400 pounds. So I talked to James a lot. Like, James, Back around between 2000 and 2003 and four and five, we were moving literally millions of dollars of product through Light Fighter because James believed in the product. James would work those contracts. He would bid us out on shit. 60th RQS Rescue Squadron and the guys that fly around all the special operations air capable Black Hawk you know, platoons and stuff. And uh, man, he pushed the shit out of our stuff. He got us in a lot of doors doing business with dudes we'd never even dreamed of doing business with. And it was just James believed we had the best product, and James sold our product. They they got thirty percent of it, like that's that's dealer margin, is thirty percent. You can do business with companies where you get sixty percent and shit, but if you carry SOE, we don't build as much. It it's a higher line, it's you know, and uh, they weren't making a shitload of money off our stuff, but they were selling the fuck out of it when they could have been selling other shit because they wanted those guys to have the best product. And that's, that's where I met James. So when James started Tactical Response, um, he want, he came on as a dealer. And uh, they were a dealer for three years, and then we ended up moving here. And we actually set up manufacturing here, and we didn't take any individual orders. We pushed all of our individual orders through Tactical Response, which was right over there in that other building. And uh, we've just been doing business since then. The Versace of Velcro. Yeah, that's what it's... That, you're the one that came up with that name, yeah. <laughs> so what would a customer have to do to be able to give you useful feedback about product improvement? I mean, you were talking earlier about people who... Send me an email. I mean, we would laugh at you, but I mean, if it was Ben, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> He'd laugh at you. I wouldn't. I'd, I'd look you in the eyes and just shake my head. No, just fucking email us. I mean, some stuff... 90% of the shit somebody wants if it's custom. I got this custom thing. We've already built it. Like, I've got it sitting in one of a hundred bags here. We built it, and it just didn't go anywhere, or we built it, and there was no market for it. And for instance, um, the Costa subload the, that, that HSGI built, the Costa subload, um, when they attached, you know, his name to it, they sold the shit out of them, couldn't manufacture them, couldn't build them. In 2000, we built a 3x6 subload. Somebody's wearing, who's, Herman was wearing Jacob one. Herman had one on, a 3x6 subload with a uh, Christian Green, Green Force Tactical holster on it. We built that rig back when, when PALS webbing first came out. When we first started putting PALS webbing and Molly gear on shit, we built a 3x6 subload. We built them for some Force Recon dudes. We did maybe 20 of them. We put them on the website. It was a hassle because once a month some dude would build them, but never enough to build hundreds of them. There was no market for it. Fast forward to a couple years ago when they do the Costa rig and nobody can fucking produce them. They're having problems left and right. The website's crashing. Fucking everything's going on. We had one sitting in a bag. We pulled it out, fucking built it. Built a few of them. I built a hundred of them. We sold them out the first day. It took us two days to ship them back then. <coughs> so the, the market just isn't right for a lot of shit at the right time. Chances are we've been around a long time. Chances are we've done it. Or... You know, we are in the industry enough to know that there's just not enough. If if a dude's asking for something that nobody makes, every now and then there's that one thing that, you know, maybe needs to be made that's not made. But usually if a dude's asking for something that we don't make and nobody else makes, there's a fucking reason that they don't make it because there's not a market for it. He thinks that, you know, it, but it depends where he's coming from. Everybody thinks they got a brilliant Everybody thinks idea. they, and, and I've seen some stupid fucking shit come out of the SEAL platoons, fucking magnetic weapons catches and all kinds of crazy shit there's a you know keep it simple there's a lot to that and i mean you get a good one sometimes and you get a fucking crazy one and then there's a bunch of shit in the middle you accept uh bitcoin payment on your website for orders i don't and and we can't we can it's just simply because we use shopify oh okay 
So I can literally click a button and they will convert, but I get paid in cash or in dollars. You still get USD. Yeah, you could use the, Bitcoin. The buyer's using Bitcoin. Correct. It would switch over. Yes, we can. I might be worth doing. Like a lot of people that are super. We probably will. Like I listened to I listened to TSP Survival Podcast. We were the first one of the first sponsors of Jack Spearco. We put a lot of you know time into him in the beginning. Um, we gave him a shitload of product to you know give away for listener appreciation and, and boost to him. I know he talks about Bitcoin quite a bit. I listen to the show. I'm I'm a little bit familiar with Bitcoin. Yeah, there's we can do it with a click of a button. Um, let's set the price point for the yamaka. Mookie War yamaka. Let's set the price point. <laughs> What? 500. No. We can't. No. We can auction some off and see what they do. What do you think? 75 bucks? We can do the first. If they're selling multi-cam ties, we can sell fuck yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll say 75 Mookie bucks for the, War for the first runs. $75. And the eighth order, we take your money and go eat sushi. And we'll send you pictures. <laughs> Deal? For real. We'll even send you a piece of the sushi. I mean... Anything else? Anyone? So you're talking about the NSW and the Mookie light rig. I mean, how many hours of production go into the NSW versus? Because I mean, there's. Dude, there's I, well, I, hold on, you, you got fucked up right there anyway. You, you took. You, uh, just so you know, he used to write for Bloomberg. He yeah, shits, I, I man. Know who he, is. he farts, and the room gets smarter. Um, and you'll understand where I'm going with this. Um, you have the hours now that it takes to make it. Now that he has implemented a system, trained people sourced material and it doesn't even begin to touch the hours money and time that he spent fucking them up before he got everything right you know what i'm saying yeah. so um a, a lot of guys are well, well fuck i can't believe it's so expensive well he people can sell their shit at a lower price point because they didn't have to pay for inventing the motherfucker right yeah you follow the because they're, they're acting like fucking chinese no offense Chinese guy that's here. Um, there's a Chinese, like Chinese motherfucker people. in here? Yeah, he is. He's back there copying your shit right now. <laughs> here, here's, here's the thing with it. We're 16 hours. Start to finish when I build fucking a dozen of them. I don't build them. Fucking, I don't. I, I sew every day, but I don't build production shit anymore. 16 hours. And you'll see some guy talking shit about, they were talking shit about the Mookie War Rig back then. It was $475. We don't even build it anymore. I can get 12 of those for 400 so I'm like, motherfucker, then why don't you build them and I'll buy them from you and I'll just resell them for $475. I'll send you my fucking patterns. You shit out a few of these. We say they're good to go. I'll use you as my sub. Well, that's not what I meant. Well, no, because you're, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Every time it's somebody who's not going to use the gear or it's some other dude trying to be in the business working in his garage like I was 20 years ago that didn't put in his time to get there. But we build shit, like we have products today. I've got a hundred products at least today. Pistol mag pouches, duty belts, trouser belts, a lot of shit, CQB mag pouches, uh, patrol, our premier top of the line mag pouches that were on all the rigs back then that we still build today. We charge the same price today that we did 20 years ago. You've got a lot of companies. Everybody talks about how expensive SOE is. I want people to say we're expensive because I tell you we're Ferrari. It's perception of value. We are the best. We need to raise our prices, and we have not on a lot of shit. There are import companies who have copied our shit that sell exactly the same. They've taken our shit apart. They come in from China. They cost more than SOE. Like you people saying that shit, look the fuck around and know what you're talking about. There's a lot of shit fucking Condor and these other companies build that looks like our shit and like other companies' shit. It costs more than we fucking charge you for it. Like, usually people saying that, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I mean, if you've kept your prices stable for 20 years, that's roughly a 50% discount. Right. Fucking math. There you go. Rain man over here. <laughs> I mean, we got a shitload of product. We, we've got 60 pieces probably right now that you guys haven't seen. We've got 60 we brought out in the last fucking 24 months. We've got a lot of new product that we're building that comes with, you know, a modern price point. But a lot of shit, we still charge the same fucking price for. Anybody else have any questions? I'm starting to get hot. How'd you get so dirty? Um, I actually tested the AK-47. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas you make love to your girlfriend or boyfriend, I would fuck the shit out of her. Name on her. <laughs> <laughs> I, almost, I almost went with that. <laughs> so Ben, what do you think of the sense? 
that's great. Okay. It's awesome. I mean, it, it's an AK. It, you know, I was thinking about it in my head. Um, the thing I never liked about AK-47s, um, mainly they were shot at me. Um, but aside from that, it was just something anyone could get. And I'm a, I'm a snob. And you are too, or you wouldn't have your little fucking logo this, logo that. And, and uh, this is the first AK-47 that has the quality of build uh, off the shelf. I mean, you actually go buy this rifle. You, you can send a guy like Jim Fuller who built me a gun and see it in a year and spend a lot of money. And it's a great thing and I love it, but this is an a, 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 a attainable uh, product. It's uh, you know like watches, you got Rolex, you got Timex, and in the middle you have pretty damn good watches that you can hold your head up high when you wear. And that's what this is, it's a, a high quality build, uh, better tolerances as Americans, that uh, we like that kind of stuff. My fear, was that because they improved the tolerances so much, it would lose the AK-47 part, which is the motherfucker works because it's all loosey-goosey. And I think they've reached the the right right blend because I did some horrible things to those guns today. And uh, for the most part, they worked. And when they didn't work, I, I'm pretty sure I can write it off as I got a little cray-cray with the testing. I mean, I literally threw it in a puddle and stomped on it. So you, you you got a few failures after some of the more aggressive Yes, stuff. I, I, I turned one, I managed to turn one of them into a bolt action gun. Um, but I had to throw it in the water, stomp on it without a magazine in it. Rack, 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 mud get in, mud get in. And then I loaded each bullet individually with muddy hands. So the whole casing is covered to include that little butt part. One of you nerds will know the, you know where that thing goes? Where the, yeah, on that thing, um, got sand in there, which is, that's the kiss of death to a gun, and it went bold action. Then I took a bottle of water, as you would in the field, because you can have water, and just poured it, rack, 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 poured it, rack, 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 and it went. It was back in business. It was boogie time. Um, so basically, your your failure, uh, the way you fixed the gun was with a bottle of water. Yes, the AK-47. But that's why I'm muddy. Looks like you took a dive into the mud pile. Well, I got well, I. Got prone. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't understand any of you motherfuckers with the RPK. It has a bipod for a fucking reason. That's the beauty of that gun is that you can, it, it, that bipod, bipod, bipod makes that gun as far as I'm concerned. You know, you, you get down and use it. If you didn't try that, see how it, easy it comes in and out. And once you get prone, does it all fit just right? You miss the point of the gun. Does the RPK still make sense to you, even if it's only semi-auto in a civilian configuration? No. Okay. So you'd want a full auto one? Well, yeah, except for the jail time. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, the whole point of the RPK is that it's a full auto, 30 caliber rifle uh, with a bipod that doesn't weigh 18 pounds. Cool. Anyone else? Why do you breathe with your mouth open? Who are we talking to? My man. Yeah. You gotta stop that. that yeah. Pussy I didn't even have to look. I knew. I just wanted you to say it. <laughs> yeah, no check comes up to you. <laughs> but you already know that, huh? I'm fucking with you, but really. Cool. What's your name? Isaiah. Hi, Isaiah. And your name? Shelton. Shelton. Hey. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Student of the Gun Homeroom. Make sure that you're listening to the radio show each and every week, watching the TV show, and that you download the mobile app. Hey, it's free, right? You can get it at the Google Play Store or your iTunes Store. And please leave your comments below.